This is Obaba Batunde from SWAT, and you're listening to Raven Up. Why is it taking you so long to get to us? Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here. And today we're going to be having a chat over Zoom with electro pop artist from Adelaide and accomplished hip hop music producer, Christian Ruiz. He has just released a new solo single called Miss You. So we have a talk to him about the process of making this song and the music video. And we also go back to talk about his work as a producer. There's so much to cover today. So let's get into it now. Before we get into today's interview, we would like to give a shout out to our Patreon. Irene, Bev and Michael. If you haven't heard of Patreon before, it is a great way to support us and keep us running and improving. You pick a membership tier that suits you and your budget per month and in return for supporting us, we'll give you behind the scenes content and free stuff. You don't have to give much either. You can be a part of our Patreons for as little as $4 a month. Just visit patreon.com forward slash rave it up. You can even donate through PayPal if you don't trust other sites. You can do so just through our email, raveituptv at gmail.com. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. We appreciate anything you can do to support us. Now, let's get into this interview. Christian, welcome to Rave It Up. It is a pleasure to finally have you on the show. How are you going today? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. So since this is your first time on our show, Christian, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better and start from the beginning, if that's okay, to get a good idea of how you've made it to where you are today. So is it true that from a young age, you're already drawn to teaching yourself how to record and produce? Like, where did the love of that come from? Were your parents into music as well? Yeah, my whole family was uh, was musical. So oh, that's helpful. Yes, yes. So as a uh, basically as, um, I guess one-year-old, two-year-old, three, four-year-old, um, just as early as I can kind of remember, they were, they were always singing and, and playing together as, you know, as, as a family. And, uh, and my sister, the, the eldest sibling, was um, a singer and she's still a singer and into music and it, it traveled, traveled the world, um, you know, doing different jazz um, shows and wow. and also uh, yeah and also with a with a with a church as well called Planet Shakers in in Melbourne she oh. uh, she's she's travelled around the world a lot um, with with them so because she is the eldest you know I kind of I kind of saw that as I'm I'm the youngest she's the eldest there's four of us uh, and then both brothers um, they played a lot sung guitar so I just found it fascinating and and I just wanted to start recording on my dad's computer and um, yeah, and just kind of jumped in and would see a bit of what my, my brother was a little bit into that. And sometimes, you know, you, you look up to your mm-hmm. old siblings. So yeah, so it was just that and just um, very fascinated and just started to, I guess, teach myself and work out how to do it. Rest is history, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever want to go down like that jazz route that your sister did? Um, well, the funny thing is never, never back then, never when I was a, a kid or, um, or even a teenager, I, I, I had no interest in jazz. And then, and then like very recently, um, I, I have, so that, that's why it, it's funny. Cause it's only been very recent that I'm like, I, I kind of understand now what the hype is about with all this jazz stuff, like, especially on, on guitar. Mm. I've started to uh to to you know get into some jazz playing which is it, it, it's great for uh you know if, as a guitarist to to learn jazz it's probably one of the best genres you could learn to get you know good at guitar so ah, yeah. I never thought of it that way but yeah I'm a big jazz fan so you are? yeah yeah love it yeah. Um, but sort of like you, I don't think I really liked it when I was a kid. It's more, you appreciate it more as an adult. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So who knows, maybe future album or something might be jazz for Christian well, Ruiz. <laughs> you never know. It could, could definitely have some sort of, uh, inspiration from, mm, uh, bit of influence from over you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
So back then as a kid, when you were kind of just, you know, doing your own thing, tweaking your producing and recording, did you ever think of it as a career? Or were there other careers that, you know, we might even be surprised at that you wanted to do as a kid? Yeah, no, I, I didn't think of it as a as a career as, as a kid. All, all that I knew was that I really loved it. I really loved to, to sing. Um, and I really really enjoyed recording, recording guitar, recording singing. Um, but I thought as a career that, that I, would, I would be in filmmaking, which oh. I did actually study. Um, I just, I just, I guess from a young age, I, I really loved music, but I just thought that it was just a very, I didn't think it was a, it was a reality until, until I was older, you mm. know, as a career, so. Yeah, as a kid, we kind of really see it more just as a hobby because we like it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It was just I didn't really put too much thought into it. I just really liked it and really, you know, lo- loved um, doing music and and uh, yeah. And I just, I guess, I guess when I was older, I found that uh, that that it, it had been such a long time that 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 I'd loved it that then that was when I started to think about the career. Mm. Well, we're really glad you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And for those who don't know as well, you are an accomplished hip hop music producer. So when did you get into producing for other artists? Because you don't even seem that old. I'm just like, when did that slot into the timeline? <laughs> uh, the, I guess the timeline was, um, so I had an old group and we were, we were recording with a, with, with a producer um, who he what happened is he moved to Sydney from from Adelaide and um, before that we were recording with him for a few years and um, and because I was I was just producing stuff for fun as well on, alongside of that so whenever we would record with him I was always asking him a million questions and um, the other guy in the group was always getting annoyed because I, I was asking him questions and then it would slow him down and he, he would show me what he was doing. But then the thing is, is because of that, then I was able to, to start doing it myself. So he, he, he couldn't really, he couldn't really see that at the time. Um, but well, so you're supposed to learn, right? You got yeah, ask questions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 So, so what happened is that that producer, he moved from Adelaide to Sydney and then um, he was quite, I guess, uh, happy with with some of the stuff he was seeing me produce. So he said, "I'll get you to um, to take on all of my other clients that I had here in Adelaide when when he moved to Sydney." So all of those questions, all those questions, you know, kind of kind of paid off. So so I started to do that, and then I did that was probably about seven eight years ago. And then um, so yeah, he left, and I started producing and recording other people and then um i just i just heard some of this uh trap music coming out of uh, what's well, really come from atlanta but it spread all, all around the us and then it, and then it really spread all around the world and has even come into pop music as well mm. with uh with with, with eight or weights and that that kind of sound so i just heard it years ago and i, I really liked it and uh, so I just thought, oh, that that'll be fun to just make some of that music. And I didn't really think about it too much at the time. And then, and then, as I found that I really enjoyed it, was when um, I, I thought, I'm just going to go over to America and I'm just going to meet some of these guys and start uh, and start working with them. So I just started going over to America and 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 started to do that and started to create different relationships with our producers there and rappers and um and and that's how i got into that yeah into into the hip-hop kind of scene good on you what a big leap of faith for yourself right to take take that giant leap over to the us and see how you go (laughs) yeah it was it was it was just all all risk all faith and um i think if you want to if you want to do things like that that are that are i guess a bit out of the ordinary a bit a bit difficult you have to do that. It's not just going to, it's not going to fall on your lap. No. Um, Otherwise we would all have what we want, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. 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 So is that the right around the same time that you scored that really cool contract in LA with, correct me if I'm saying this right, Zaytoven? Is that how you say his name? Yeah. That, yeah. Zaytoven. Yeah. That, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, it was the, the second time that I went 
and and it was in Atlanta and uh yeah and then I I met him and uh he invited me to to go to the studio but what what happened the, the reason that he invited me to to go to the studio was because I had done a lot of um I guess preparation so I he was like my favorite producer I really wanted to work with him so I was trying to contact him on any sort of uh social media or email I could find I found people around him so and I contacted them only one of them got back to me which was actually his manager oh. his man yeah his, his manager asked me to send him some beats so I, I sent him some beats and then it, I didn't realize he was actually a rapper as well then he used some of my beats and then he was posting them on his Instagram so then I had this in with mm -hmm. Zaytoven and I said to him, oh, you, and I named the songs and, and I said, and I made them. And then he, 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 he really liked those songs. And then right after that, he said, well, I'll be in the studio all week, you know, come, come to the studio. I went there all week. And then it was when I was there in the studio with him that he, uh, that he, he said, oh, I was looking to, um, to sign a, a young producer. And he offered me that, that contract. And I was the first, um, the first one he ever offered it to, as, as even out of everyone else in the U.S. It Congrats. was, a, it was, a, it was an, it was an Aussie. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And like, he's an incredible person to work with. You know, when I was looking at your bio and his, you know, he's worked with artists like Usher and The Weeknd yeah. and Drake. That's incredible. Have you met any of those artists yet? Because, you know, hopefully you can work with them in the future. Yeah, Fingers crossed. Definitely. Yeah. I haven't met any of them yet. Um, yeah. So uh, unfortunately, what as I was starting to do that, COVID kind of happened and uh, it kind mm. of spoiled a, a lot of that. So I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping that um, when I when I go back to to the US again, um, that, that then I'll, I'll be able to meet some some of those artists. Yeah. Unfortunately, COVID obviously brought you back home to Australia. You know, we love having you here, but it did also lead you to releasing your own music. So it did, fantastic. Yeah. It did, yeah, yeah. What it's made you true. want to start releasing your own? Is it just from looking at everyone else doing it and you're like, oh, I got to finally do that for myself? Yeah, I, I've always wanted to because I used to have a group um, and, and we, we made our own music and I would, I would produce as well and, and sing. And uh, ever since then, I always had this this uh, desire to release my own music, and I would produce it, and I would write it, and I and I would sing, and um, and my I guess my my game plan was to get my foot in the door as a producer, and uh, and 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 build a lot of uh, relationships there, so that then when I released my own music. It would uh, it, it would kind of uh, you know help it to to take off because of yeah. all of the network that I had, um, but I di I didn't really get where where I wanted to yet as a producer. But then um, just coming back here, I just thought, well, there's not really much else going on Why while, while, while I was here, so I might as well I'll just do it now because I've got I've got this extra time, um, so I'm I'm just going to start. I'm yeah, I'm writing my songs, producing them now, and I and I didn't really know, I guess, when I would release them. But then after after I had written some of them, and and I and I guess I would listen to them back. Then that then it was when I decided, yeah, you know, uh, I think I'll I'll start doing this now, and um, it's just different to how I uh, I guess I planned it. But that's I guess that's how. Our life goes meant to be i love yeah. people like you and like me as well very similar those hard-working people that you know when something like COVID happens and we're off for two years it's like great i finally needed this time to get the stuff i want done <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh that's really good and it's an incredible I, i'm gonna talk about your track in a second but since you did bring up the band as well how has it been working by yourself instead of a band because a lot of people obviously might find it uh, and as i've heard in the past sometimes people find it really scary because they're just out on their own they got no one else to fall back upon but then also at the same time they have all creative control and they don't have to run it by anybody else yeah 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 i, I i'm quite used to creating things on my own because I, I always make uh, i always make these these hip-hop beats by myself so 
I'm, uh, I guess I, I've learned to finish tracks like which which a lot of bands struggle with no, like knowing people um t- tell me this um they struggle with being able to finish the track on their own and and they need these these other minds to be able to c- make it complete so they, they they can only create partial um tracks so I, I guess i've just forced myself to to be able to finish them and because of that it's um i guess it's 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 natural to me now to just kind of create something all on my own but in in saying that i do really enjoy collaborating as well because i do things on my own so often Mm. it is nice to actually have somebody else's ideas as well and and you know get a different perspective and 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 uh and and put that together um but then it's it's tricky because sometimes, like you said, with the with the creative control, that like with with the with the band, there were things sometimes where I, I completely disagreed with with certain things, and then mm. um, you can feel like sometimes the track is becoming something that you didn't want it to be. And when when you when it's really important to you, when your songs are really important to you, that can be really difficult. It can mm. be really really. Uh, it's like if I guess if you it, it, I guess it is like a, like a baby really, and it's like if somebody is trying to um, take your baby away. Yeah, it almost you know can feel like, like that. Understand? Yeah. <clears throat> so is there also like a certain type of fear with it also being such a competitive industry going into it as a singer? Because it seems like everybody wants to be a singer, right? Yeah. But also yeah. everyone in the industry needs a music producer. So was that a little bit hard to be like? okay, I'm going to step away from that now? Uh, well, like I said, I always planned for it to happen later. So what it de- I definitely was, uh, I, I was, I was quite nervous um, because I thought, oh, now, when you're a producer, it's, it's a lot easier to release music because it doesn't really have your name on it unless you mm. go into, into the credits and, and you look, which not everybody does. But, you know, obviously the artist name and picture is what everybody will see. Yeah. So as soon as you change that over and you're the artist, it is a lot. It is a lot more scary because all of all of a sudden you're you're being judged by everybody, and doesn't matter, I guess, what kind of art you create. There's always going to be there's always going to be haters. So um, I guess you can also, if you have when you're starting that and it is so important to you, you can be a bit a bit nervous about getting that uh getting that negative kind of stuff as well which you just have to you i guess if you just expect it and you just you realize as well look in the end of the day it doesn't matter what you do there's always going to be somebody that hates it and to be honest it's probably more to do with them than it is with you and you just have to you just have to have that i guess um that understanding uh, mm. And because if, if you don't, you just won't be able to to go into the industry because it'll it'll just it'll just it'll destroy you. Yeah, eat you alive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just gotta have that faith in yourself and just ignore those haters. Yeah, yeah. Hater Swift says, "Haters gonna hate." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so for our audience, your debut single as a solo artist is "Miss You." So go check it out, guys. Came out last month. And it's a track talking about, you know, unexpected connections and being afraid to admit it. So I'm sure we can all relate to that at one part of our lives, right? If you don't mind me asking, was this based on a true story for you or was it kind of based on, you know, what your friends have been through? Yeah, no, it was, a, it was based on a true story for me. So that's that's where I always really, uh, really write from. Uh, it's just very, very honest things that are, are on my heart. Um I just have a, a, I guess, a, an attitude and understanding that that's where that's where the best songs will come from and where they have from the from from the past. So that's kind of my, I guess, songwriting philosophy for my own songs. Yeah, is uh, it's always uh, it's always a, I guess, a, a, a truth a truthful thing that is kind of come from my own uh, situation. Well, I definitely find that connects with the the audience way better because as humans, we go through a lot of the similar stuff. And for this yeah. song, we've all been through it. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. I think I think people um, as well they they might connect more on a subconscious level. They might not know uh, particularly why they're connecting with it, uh, 
but I think that they will actually connect when, when things are genuine. I think that humans are attracted to things that are genuine. So even if they don't ne necessarily know that somebody is being dishonest with them, even if they're just somebody just talking to them or, or something like that, it's, I think we, we, we have like, it's, it's there to kind of protect us where we actually have quite a good, I guess, subconscious uh, read of, of things. And we might just feel, we might not know why we might feel a little bit funny. And yeah. It's, it's like because that, yeah. <laughs> subconscious is picking it up. And I think that will happen with music as well. And you just feel like, you know, I don't really connect with this and it, it mm. could be because of, of that. So I think, I think when you do like you, like you said, people just, I think they will connect with it a lot more. And, yeah. uh, and, and then hopefully, you know, hopefully it can help as well, you yeah. know, can help them, uh, you know, if, if, if there's a similar situation or something like that, you know, if it can, if it, it can help one person in your song can do that. I think that you've, uh, you've, you've achieved something pretty great. Mm. And yeah, even if you don't connect with the guys, it's still such a catchy song and it's like a party for the ears. That's like I loved about it. I was like, I have to have you on. That's an awesome song. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Has the songwriting always come naturally to you? Because I loved like one of the opening lyrics, you're calling my name with your eyes. I was like, wow, that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it has always come come naturally I, I i just would write songs like very young uh, for you know i would just not really trying to i guess write a song i would i just write on a on a guitar or something like that or sometimes i just sing i just sing things as well like it might be about a situation or something and it's just like it's just like you're trying you might just be trying to be funny or something like that and you just start singing about something that's going on in the day and i find that sometimes i just do that and i'm and i like i realize that i'm doing it after but i just kind of start doing it so i think i'm yeah just naturally i just you know just a songwriter so that was just about as well like how yeah you know like honestly like i said about how how I feel when I guess somebody you, you don't you don't actually really even know them that well and you know there's like this uh but it's that subconscious thing again where you know that there's this connection and it's 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 with 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 the eye contact and it's like it's not the the words aren't doing the talking it's um yeah it's all like it's the in look the, in the eyes yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> But a lot of people also saying this track has like hints of The Weeknd and Justin Bieber, and I can totally hear that as well. Was that deliberate or did it just kind of happen like that? Did you use them as inspiration? Yeah, you, yeah I definitely uh, use them as inspiration. Yeah, I guess like I, um, I, I, like, I like those artists. I like their music. I like the producers and, um, and writers that, that work with them. So it's all, yeah, all definitely, um, yeah, inf influences for oh, sure. Oh, good, yeah. So if you like The Weeknd and the Justin Bieber, guys, check this song out. And everyone should also go follow you on Instagram, get you some more followers. <laughs> you have this really cool video up there that I just absolutely loved of how you made this track. And I was blown away by, like, how many, how, how much layering is involved, right? Like, with diff different instruments, different sounds guitars, pianos, other instruments, even like you drumming on, on the back of your guitar. I was like, that's so unique. It's something I would never have thought of. So how yeah. long did it take you the whole thing to put together? You know, did the music come first or the lyrics? Share with us the whole, yeah, shebang. <laughs> yeah, the, um, yeah, the music was, was first. So um, with, with this one, so usually I, I will do the music first so particularly um i guess it's always different but mo most of the time i'll just start creating music and find chord progressions that i really feel and you, you know that you connect with them they're emotional um, they make you feel stuff you start playing those chord progressions you find sounds that do the same thing and really work with with those chords as well um with this one i just picked up my acoustic guitar I started playing some some you know chords that that that, that, that I like that I kind of made me feel emotion um 
and then I just started like some something just came to me and I just started to I just started to um yeah just to, to sing something and then I was like I, I got I gotta get this down so I I started to to record and then um and then basically I built I built a lot of music around that chord progression that, that I that I started with on on acoustic guitar um yeah and then I just started basically um I'll just sing so I'll start with the melody and I'll just like I'll sing a lot of gibberish over the music yeah and uh and just get all all of these melodies like I, I I try not to think of anything and I just hit record and I'll just sing and get all all of this weird gibberish and you know um and sometimes lyrics come out as well that that I keep which is cool because they can just kind of come out of a, just a just a subconscious um they almost write themselves and um but what, yeah, once I get all that gibberish, I'll just fill in with the lyrics and it'll be like, I'll start to work out while I'm doing this, what, what is this song about and what am I feeling at the moment? And then I'll start to write that and I'll fit it into, because I've got the melody already. So I've got certain syllables and I'll, and I'll fit the message I'm trying to speak about or, or, or a scenario and, and, and I'll basically paint in I'll start writing it all down. I'll get the lyrics and then, uh, and then I'll then, you know, obviously record it all. So, yeah. So I guess it, for, for the most part, it always kind of be music and then melody. So I find if, if you've got lyrics first, it can kind of restrict the melody. Mm, that's true. Yeah. Um, but I have written songs before from lyrics first too. It's just that the, it's just not, not the, the, the usual way that I'll do it. Mm. Do you find like some, song lyrics and you know ideas for the whole message of the song just come to you at like random times say like in the shower or on the toilet or something <laughs> yeah 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 definitely that would work <laughs> yeah 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 there's been times before where i'm washing my hands in 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 the bathroom and and and, I, and i've gotten like lyrics and melody and stuff yeah it, i think sometimes happens. <laughs> yeah well i think i think the cool thing is is you can write some of the best stuff when it's not forced Mm. that's the thing as soon as you're trying to force it i find that it's not as good so that's why i think some you've got to like you've got to lean on those things sometimes where they come and and you weren't trying to do it that's why when i record i try not to think and i hit record i don't even know what i'm going to do and i just start singing and then and then sometimes you've got these really like cool melodies um that, that 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 I like, and it's just it's just interesting that 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 came from some somewhere where you weren't even trying to do anything, or you didn't even know what you were going to do. Like, and that's that's why I try to actually push everything out of my mind, and I try not to really think of anything when I do it. So I'm kind of in that bathroom like space again, or driving space if 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 I'm doing that. Um, but then, that's yeah, like a meditative state in a way. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. It's just. Um, I think it's a, it's a way to to not overthink and to to almost let inspiration come instead of it being like uh, an analytical. Mm. It's more. Um, it's more inspired. Yeah. Yeah. So it's better to just not have like a you know it has to be done by this date. That whole due date thing just puts that pressure on you, right? <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, definitely. I try I do try to to do stuff quickly cuz I, I don't I don't want a song to you know to to just be going on for 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 months and months but then you know, it it can be hard sometimes yeah with 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 I guess a due date like you're saying if if you're trying to have everything be inspired sometimes if you don't get anything then what 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 do you do? So mm, very very true. Yeah. And the music video is also out now for everyone to check out on YouTube. And a couple of things I want to talk about as well today about that music video. There seems yeah. to be like pieces of paper falling from the sky in the video. How come? What was the concept there? At first I thought it was like the girl's number and you just couldn't like oh, grab yeah. it or something. <laughs> you can use that if that's you so want. Funny. Yeah, that's so fun. Yeah, um, so, so it, it ties in with the 
I guess, um, you know, meaning behind the song. So I'm obviously, uh, I'm thinking a lot about this, you know, especially with, you know, with, with this song meaning, I'm talking about this uh, connection. Then in the chorus, I'm saying, I don't miss you. I don't, I don't see you every day. Um, you know, I'm basically, um, I'm trying to, you know, ignore how, mm. how I feel. And, um, and yeah, I get, I guess I'm doing that, but I am actually overthinking at the time. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it a lot. So there's a lot of thoughts um, in, in my mind and that's, that's what those notes are. So they're, mm. they're actually, they're, they're all of those thoughts that are like basically consuming me and uh and and uh yeah just overtaking in, in, in my mind so it's just it's just a picture as well of like how how crazy um or how hectic the Your thoughts are <laughs> in my mind yeah how many thought there's like just being bombarded with thoughts like all the time you know that's so, a great visual concept did you come up with that or did someone else yeah, I came. I, I came up with that. That that was how the uh, that was how the video was uh, was was created. Um, the whole concept for it. I just kind of um, I just saw. I, I I was trying to think what do I do for the video, and then I just I just saw myself like I, you know I had a, like a, a visual picture of myself just standing there with all of these notes falling on me as mm. uh, you know, of my thoughts and then from there I was like all right I'm going to do that and then let's build the whole concept we'll around that, that. Yeah. yeah yeah I love videos like that like that's way better than just say just having a girl at the other side of the room and you just keep staring at each other you know those sort of yeah. video <laughs> clips it's like yeah that's just too literal of like what you're talking about let's try to make it you know a little bit more metaphorical in a way yeah yeah exactly yeah and and, and sometimes with that you can run into the problem of um, not having everybody understand it, but that's just that's just the reality of of doing something like that. Mm, but I, I, the creative I, field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There, people are never going to understand anything. So, like, unless like things like that, unless it's super literal. Mm. Um, but yeah, me me personally, I'm not a big fan of of those things that are super literal. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Oh, as we said, you're always going to have haters, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and how hard was it getting that bed in the middle of like nowhere in the middle of the desert i'm <laughs> like wow <laughs> it, yeah it was it was pretty hard we uh we we did it we like uh we hired a van and um and the bed almost didn't fit into the back of the van oh no like, it was like millimeters like away from from fitting in and it, we almost thought it wouldn't fit and uh, so but we did we did get it in there and then um, it was a really hard drive, like to uh, to, to get it. It was, it was a pink lake, and you had to go through like all of these super bumpy, shrubby trails to to get out there, which is uh. like um, so ve it's very difficult to actually get the bed out there. And then obviously, when when we got the van there, then we had to carry all the pieces of the bed and put it together on on the on like on, there's like a pink salt lake and and um and there's there's different spots on those lakes where you can start to sink yep there's also the possibility of a, of the bed sinking or, or yeah you don't want that halfway or, through the video just yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so uh yeah it was a bit of a mission and uh then then when we when we did it all the um the the battery died in the van because we had the headlights on for one of the shots and then that and then and then like to even get somebody out there to 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 like help you because it's like such a there's all these weird trails to get out there that that was a bit of a mission as well and they, they weren't very happy but um oh, well yeah. you can never say that you will never ever forget that shoot now <laughs> yeah I, I, I definitely won't i won't forget it we 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 had the bed the bed was still out on the lake because we moved the van to get another shot with the headlights and then the battery died and now the bed was about a kilometer away fr from us it so wasn't getting it, darker and, and, it, and it was night time by that point so then when the person came to help us we didn't want to tell them that we had a bed out there <laughs> so then so we had to wait for them to help us and we had to wait a little while and then go back in and and go and get the bed so it was like it was it, it was 
definitely uh, a bit How of long of a day was that? That that day was uh, oh, that was probably about. Um, well, I think we we probably finished that almost at midnight, and we we started we started in the morning. So yeah, it's quite quite a long day. So around midnight, you're trying to get this bed back in the van, and <laughs> yeah, just yeah, just just yeah, 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 probably like around around eleven or something. We were trying to get this this bed back into. The- yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. Wow. All right. I'm really glad I asked you about that now because what a story. <laughs> we yeah. heard about that otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Might have to choose an easier location next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get all the the thing like, like the challenge. <laughs> I like the challenge, yeah. If if it's gonna if it's gonna make the video look cooler, I'll I'll definitely um yeah, be in for it for the challenge. Well, it definitely did make it cooler, so I think it was worth all of that hassle, <laughs> hopefully. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I hope so. Now, another thing I'd love to talk about on your Instagram account is that before recently, you hadn't posted for a while. Was that because of COVID or you just want a bit of a break from social media for a bit? Uh, yeah, well, I guess it, just due to COVID, what, trying to work out what I'm doing. Um, when I came back, I, I was I was hoping I'd be able to go to the US again, like you know, in 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 a month or two or something like that. Mm. And um, now now I've been here for about two years, so um, so we'll it get was, back soon. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know it. yeah. It was it was just it, obviously for everybody, it was very difficult to know uh, when things would calm down when you would be able to travel again no nobody knew so I guess I I was just trying to work out what I was doing and even with the posting um what am I trying to do yeah what am I going to post (laughs) yeah 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 so that's 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 the reason for it just trying to work out exactly what I'm doing so um yeah so now yeah now that I'm focusing more on uh, on on artistry I'll, I'll yeah I'll be posting more about that and so uh, what's yeah. up next for you is there another song coming out after miss you or an album tour yeah yeah there is um so i'm i'm doing a remix oh for, that'd be miss cool you. yeah be a party yeah. to the ears now christian how are you gonna over yeah. top that <laughs> it just yeah just like you know di- different uh different genre so mm. um just like kind of like a like a dance kind of uh remix dance house dare you to do a jazz version a jazz version yeah <laughs> that would be cool i could see that yeah that'd be cool yeah, yeah. yeah cool. oh i got look at look at his mind i can yeah. see all just the <laughs> cogs working in your brain right now you're like ooh. <laughs> well it, it, it'd be shout cool out to me if that happens yeah <laughs> yeah yeah definitely definitely well I, i've played the song uh, you know just acoustically and um it sounds pretty cool so that's why i was thinking like it, it definitely uh have a jazz twist to it. Mm, um, add some yeah. trumpets and who knows what else. Yeah. Saxophone. <laughs> that would be cool. That would yeah. be very cool. And uh yeah, and then uh and then I've got I've got more singles to uh to come out uh after the remix as well. So I've got I really have stuff that's that that, that was done. Mm. So that when I dropped um the first song I basically could start dropping and I wouldn't be, you know, kind of uh you know up to the you know like we said before up to waiting for inspiration to come and that kind of thing for for other songs so true so i can actually make sure that i'm uh posting you know frequently because that's um quite important for even just for spotify and that kind of thing if uh if you're not taking too long so yeah and now the travel is opening up are you wanting to do a bit of a tour and bring shows around well, definitely yeah. Australia. I don't know about the US, but please come around Australia. Come to Sydney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, tours tours would be would definitely. Uh, I, I I love performing, so it would be it would be great to do it if there's um yeah if, if there if there's if there's demand for it then uh, yeah I definitely uh do do a tour. Oh, cool. Please keep us up to date. Come back on the show if that ever happens. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to hear all about it and and definitely come see you, of course. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. You're welcome. You're awesome. Now I know we've nearly been talking for 45 minutes already, Christian, but I thought just to finish up today, would you like to play a game with me? 
Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's a really famous game here in Rave It Up. It's called the two minute hot seat. And Ooh. what I do is I ask you various questions. You just have to pick your preference. So it's like dogs or cats or singing or dancing. And you have to answer as many questions in two minutes as possible. And then when we finish, we'll see where you sit on the leaderboard up against everyone else that's played the game on the show. All right, cool. <laughs> everyone loves that competitive element. Yeah. They do. All right. Yeah. All right. And I'll give I'll you think. the I'll give you the Australian list. I was like, I was like, I was thinking, yeah, he was in the US for a bit. Should I give him the American one? No, I'll give you the Aussie one. You're Aussie. We'll do Aussie. <laughs> All right. Let me just get my stopwatch out. Here we go. And because it's over Zoom, I give you about two minutes fifteen, just to be fair. I'll okay. Do that for all my Zoom interviews. Yeah. All right, you ready, Christian? And I'm to ready. give you a bit of an idea, like we want to top of the Zoom rave it up leaderboard. Sixty-one questions. Sixty-one. Sixty. Yeah. Let's see if we can right. beat that. Yeah. All right. Here we go. And I'm just going to change my the view of the camera so I can see us both. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. iPhone or Samsung? Samsung. Apple or Android? Android. Rap or rock music? Rock. Rock or pop? Rock. Pop or country? Pop. Beach or mountains? Beach. Beach or pool? Pool. Skiing or snowboarding? Skiing. Comedy or action? Comedy. Blondes or brunettes? Brunette. Sweet or salty? Uh, Sweet. Sunglasses or hat? Sunglasses. SUV or convertible? Convertible. Mac or PC? Mac. PlayStation or Wii? PlayStation. Singing or dancing? Singing. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Italian or Chinese food? Italian. Summer or winter? Summer. Kim Kardashian or Scarlett Johansson? Scarlett Johansson. Johnny Depp or Will Smith? Will Smith. Mall or online shopping? Mall. Cinema or home movie? Cinema. Ice cream or gelato? Gelato. Cake or cookies? Cookies. Cookies or cookie dough? Cookie dough. Family or friends? Family. Football or soccer? Soccer. Christmas or your birthday? Christmas. Night or day? Night. Bus or train? Train. Straight or curly hair? Straight. Eye color blue or brown? Brown. Vampire or werewolf? Vampire. Texting or calling? Calling. Sydney or Melbourne? Sydney. Friday or Saturday? Saturday. TV or movies? Movies. Starbucks or Gloria Jeans? Gloria Jeans. Snow or surf? Surf. Harry Potter or Twilight? Harry Potter. Family Guy or The Simpsons? Simpsons. McDonald's or Hungry Jack's? McDonald's. Red Rooster or KFC? KFC. French fries or chips? Chips. Burger or hot dog? Burger. Pies or sausage rolls? Pie. Tomato sauce or barbecue sauce? Tomato sauce. Guitar or drums? Guitar. Sneakers or thongs? Sneakers. Bike or scooter? Bike. Leather or denim? Leather. City or country? City. Biting your nails or picking your nose? (laughs) Biting nails. Tattoos or piercings. Tattoos. Backpack or suitcase. Suitcase. Pen or pencil. Pen. Mum or dad. Mum. Headphones or speakers. Speakers. Book or magazine. Book. And we're out of time. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) There was a couple I was surprised at. I was like, wow, you said Sydney. I thought you would have said Melbourne. (laughs) No, I definitely like Sydney better than Melbourne. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Surprising. It's, it's, Sid, Sid, I really, really like Sydney very much. Yeah, yeah. You have to come back. <laughs> well, my, my brother and his wife and my nephews, they, they live in Sydney. So, um, Oh, yeah. that's really cute. So you must visit a lot then. Yeah, I did before um, COVID and then not, not as much, obviously, during. But, yeah, yeah. I, I would go a lot. Yeah. Well, I think the most important question is how many questions do you think you answered in that time? 50. Oh, more than that. <laughs> 60. One more than that. You actually answered 61? 61 questions. So oh, you're wow. at the same spot as the first oh, the person wow. who's top of the leaderboard. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, if we did that on person, you would have actually been higher than that. So uh, almost, I almost won. Gee, almost. one question. You, you are question at the top of the leaderboard though. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview now, Christian, but as a closing statement, and was probably the most important question, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14-year-old self? 14-year-old self. I would tell my 14-year-old self, um, do, do what, you, what you love, 
don't worry about what anybody else says mm. just do like follow your follow your heart and um and just get used to you know basically having you're going to have criticism you're going to have people telling you what they think they should do um but just realize that it's actually more it's more from their own uh, uh you know situations or from their experience mm. so if they think you can't do something or that won't work it's actually because they don't believe that it will work for them it doesn't yeah. actually have anything to do with yourself so. mm. oh i love that that's good for all the young listeners too that are listening today thank you that's all fantastic right fantastic advice and if our audience want to contact you, find out what you're up to in the future, where should we go follow you? Yeah, uh, head over to Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Um, sub subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Spotify. But, yeah, in, in, I guess the good thing about Instagram is, um, you know, you, you can probably see more of what's going on. So. Mm, it connects to everything these days, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Christian. It's been a lot of fun and I've loved hearing about all your stories, especially that, that funny video shoot. That was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry that you had to go through it. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, hopefully yeah. hopefully it was worth it. So, yeah. Oh, definitely. Great yeah. video in the end uh, on yeah. YouTube, guys. <laughs> and you're welcome on the show anytime, okay? So when you've got a new song out or about to do a tour, come back on. Sounds good. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks. Keep in contact. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thanks so much for having me. You're very welcome, Christian. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, please visit our website, raveituptv.com. All the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy. And while you're there, please also check out our book, Knowing What I Know Now, as well as a mini ebook that I wrote last year called Staying Strong, Finding Inner Peace During Hard Times. And if you would like to further support Rave It Up, please also visit patreon.com forward slash rave it up. You can pick a membership tier that works with you in your budget for as little as $4 a month. And in return, you receive free stuff and bonus content of Rave It Up. How cool is that, right? Like the price of a coffee. So go check that out, guys. And please also tell your friends all about Rave It Up. Spread the word. But for now, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.